The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. And AJ Appleton. It is Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. Right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me, as always, AJ Applegarth. Uh, besides the obvious, uh, how's it going? <laughs> it's going. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I feel you, man. Uh, it's pretty much, pretty much my my description of of life right now. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still here. I guess that's good, right? Uh, I mean, uh, I guess. Thankfully, NFL free agency has has arrived, um, and we'll you know, we're not gonna touch on any of that this show. But I don't know. If we'll talk later about this, but I figured maybe next week because uh, we'll all be kind of dying to do something else again. We maybe we can do a show on some free agency news. But um, yeah, who the hell knows when baseball is going to start? It looks like they're going to delay it at least eight weeks now. So we're looking mid May at best. It's anybody's guessing game at this point. Um, on another uh, note, will, man. Oh, sorry. What? I oh, I will say that the the only good thing about that is that maybe we'll skip out on some of these ridiculous rainouts that we have, you know, all throughout April. But I still miss baseball desperately. Yeah, no kidding. Was super excited uh, for it to be back, and now it's not. So yeah, no, no kidding. I, I, I'd much rather have it back. I, I deal with a few rainouts here and there for, for yeah. sports, sports. But yeah, on another note, man. I uh, so of course schools across the nation closed a couple weeks, pretty much everywhere. Um, my kids are home. I got a six-year-old, almost seven-year-old, and a three-year-old. One's in preschool. One's in first grade. I've been kind of trying to homeschool them for the last couple, you know, for the last few days. Uh, try to do anything but let them just veg out on TV for you know eight hours straight until my wife gets home. Dude, it's rough. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, yeah. I, I, the one thing that's coming out of this is that teachers deserve a massive raise after this. I could not imagine doing this for thirty-five, you know, thirty to thirty-five kids in a classroom for an entire year, right? I know they have more time to like plan and all that kind of jazz, but it's just, it's ridiculously hard and trying to corral your kids all day like that, it's hard, man. I, it's, I only got two. I, I taught for a year after college and uh, I've been doing something other than teaching ever since. Um, <laughs> probably partially because of that. Uh, it, it wasn't easy and you know there's there's a lot to deal with and i taught an elective class i was tech ed so i had like the fun computer class and i didn't have to worry about math history all of that stuff but mm. yeah it was i can't imagine having to teach through this right now um so more power to them uh glad they get a, a bit of a respite to just be home with their own children and have to deal with them yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm looking forward to them going back to school as soon as humanly possible. So, uh, so we actually do have a little bit of baseball news. Uh, it's bad, but Chris Sale officially getting, excuse me, getting Tommy John. Uh, he tried to throw yesterday and, and had renewed discomfort, so it's official. Just you know, Red Sox really aren't going to be good this year anyway. Might as well just do it. Don't try to pitch through it. And, uh, yeah, so sucks for me. Took him in TGFBI around pick 38 or something like that, or 39. Like, it was kind of late for him at the time, but, you know, it's whatever. I took the risk. I thought it was going to work out for me. Um, so, yeah, there we go. All right, man, so tonight's show, we're going to get into some uh, position battle talk. Um, see what came out of spring training and then talk about some ADP um, comparisons between you know late February and, and, and now see see how things have changed obviously things are going to change drastically you know with drafts a lot of drafts probably getting delayed at this point but 
you know, I know some, including a draft that you and I are in, AJ, are, is still going to happen next Monday just because we want something to do. But, um, yeah. you know, that's kind of where we're at. And I think a lot of people are in that boat, too. They just want to draft and be ready. Um, but to help us out with that, we're bringing on a guest, Ryan Hallam uh, from Fantasy Alarm. He does NFL, baseball, XFL. He's in Tout Wars head-to-head. He's in Labor Mixed. What's up, man? You there? Yeah, guys, man. I was out. I was at the bar tonight. I was hanging out with all my friends. I went to the beach today. You know. You live in Florida? Florida. <laughs> oh, no. Just kidding. <laughs> I've been home all week. <laughs> uh, now, you know, NFL has certainly brought a little life into the sports world this week, but I'm, I'm really hoping baseball, it, you know, they're kind of giving us worst case scenario that we're not looking till you know, Memorial Day or worse. But, you know, like you said, I've been in a couple drafts, a couple industry drafts. A couple of my other leagues are still, you know, carrying on their drafts as if it, we were starting in a couple weeks. So hey, you got to stay plugged into baseball. I know nothing's happening. I know they kind of send everybody home from, from camps, but got to keep hope alive. Exactly. Yeah, pretty much. It's, uh, it's a little bit of... You know, my, my I, I initially was on on board with with postponing the draft uh, once they announced. But somebody in my league had a really good point. He was like, "Look, they could seriously just announce like a week before the season starts that the yeah, season started." That's what I think. Like, and then okay, guess guys, what? <laughs> guess what? If you waited until that announcement, good luck getting twelve people together at the same time to draft within a week. It took me three yeah. weeks back in January to find a time in March. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. So we were just like, we're keeping it. There was like one guy that was like, "This is ridiculous," and I was like, "No, no, 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 no." You're ridiculous. Great You're point. This is a great point that uh, we've got plenty of time to find a replacement. Yeah, I, I forget who it was that brought it up in our league first, but it was just kind of like, "No, we're." We, this is a great point, and and I just legit do not want to go through the hassle of trying to reschedule because I'm the commissioner. I do not want to reschedule everybody again. It's such a pain in the yep. ass. So. The other reason I don't want to do it, because you know, the main argument people have, like, you don't even know when it's going to start. You don't know, like, these injured guys. You know, Nobody, we're all in knows. The Nobody knows. Nobody knows, but we're all in level playing fields, so what's the difference? I know. Exactly. You're going to have the people who, who, you know, are a little more risky that are going to go Aaron Judge, Stanton, you know, Clevenger, the guys who we know are hurt, and you're going to have people who go a little more conservative. It's just another wrinkle of strategy for 2020 this year as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm right there with you. And, and, you know, like, I get it because a lot of leagues, especially home leagues, friendly leagues, right, you know, they wait till the end of March to do it because they want all the information possible. And these are the leagues that are doing it. These are the leagues that have these discussions. So I understand the, the thinking process, and that's where my head was at first. But honestly, just – with the unknown of the scheduling right now, it's just no way am I trying to cram it in as fast as possible. There's going to be people that miss the draft, and then they're going to complain that their team sucks. It's like, well, what do you want me to do? But so now, like, yeah. hopefully everybody shows up next, you know, this coming Monday, and we should be good to go. So, all right, man. Well, I've already been sipping on my beer this week, but let's uh, let's get to that segment. Mm, beer. So we do a little something called Beer of the Week, Ryan, and uh, I'll let you know about this a little ahead of time. What uh, what are you what are you partaking in this week? I try to partake in beer of the day when I okay. can, uh, <laughs> but tonight, going local, there's a, a you know I'm in upstate New York. There's a brewery called Sloop that does a lot of the hazy IPAs, which is pretty much my jam right now. Nice. And tonight, uh, having one of my favorites, it's called Juice Bomb. It's a New England IPA. It is delicious. Nice, nice. AJ, what you rocking? Um, well, I, I stocked up on quite a lot of beer um, two days ago, and then quite a lot more of beer today. So you need to today, come make a delivery I'm, my I'm way, because I can't get out. I got two kids. <laughs> Find a way, bro. Find a way. <laughs> Just take it with um, me. Hey, guys, sit in the car. <laughs> so being that we're in baseball season but not, I found this little gem here. Oh, very nice. Steady Eddie from local brewery nice. uh, Union Craft Brewing here in Baltimore. That's uh, It's their seasonal IPA. I have yet to taste it, so I will go ahead and do that while you talk about your beer. All righty. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> So mine's a, a repeat that I've had on the show before. Uh, it is a Ooh. 
Oh, whatever. I'm, I'm a little. I'm a little low on. I'm a little low on supplies. Sorry, man. I can't get out. Wow, ah, two kids. Wow. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You were saying. Would you like me to continue? Um, so mine is a Brookfield Beer Farms local local brew, like literally ten minutes from my house. Um, called Drinking Buddies. It's an it's an IPA. It's actually a, a New England double IPA. Um, there you go. I nice. gave it a four and a quarter on Untapped the last time I had it, and uh, I'm agreeing with that again. So, good stuff, and uh, I look forward to drinking with some buddies soon again, hopefully. So, I'm yeah, well, so I'm gonna do that right now. Actually, yeah. cheers, guys. We, <laughs> we were we were supposed to be drinking buddies today. Uh, yes, while watching NCAA, the NCAA here. tournament that never was kickoff. Um, yeah, a little, a little piece of me is dead inside for, for that as well. Yeah. If, Seriously, uh, my if, if you thing. are interested, though, I, I brought back one of my things. And, Joe, you're probably familiar with this over the years. My uh, my pop culture tournament. So yeah. I, have, like, oh, nice. movie, I just start, just rolled out today. So go to find me on Twitter at Fighting Chance. 80s, 90s, 2000s, and 2010s uh, comedy movie tournament. There's four polls per day. So go out there and do that every day. Something else to do to keep us occupied. Yeah, man, absolutely. I was I was gonna say, uh, and, and I voted on those. I saw that today. Um, we we did something similar two days ago. Uh, we kept it basketball related because we were just dying for some basketball. We did best two thousand NCAA basketball player. Um, so we did we chose like the best season of like some of the players. We missed on a few. Look, we're not perfect. Like we're not NCAA basketball like super duper experts but you know we went through a couple different lists cherry picked some guys we missed on a couple big names i get it but uh it's still fun guys like just go vote have fun with it don't kill us if we miss your favorite player um just go vote the the really really big guns are in there you know like they're all there so go vote it's up on the site um right now the whole first round is up until half till about noon on friday so hopefully, yeah. you know, people listening to this Thursday night after I post it, Friday morning, can go rip over there and, and vote. Um, and then the the next the next rounds will be up for two days each. So we're just gonna rip through it and hopefully get done with it by next week. Um, but I like your idea, just prolong it as humanly possible because who knows when this is gonna end, right? But. <laughs> uh, it's whatever. You know, usually I've done it over the years, and it's always uh, you know coincided with the NCAA tournament finishes on the championship night. But right, that's, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, might as well just have some fun with it. I get it. I get it. I totally do, man. All right, well, let's talk some baseball, man. Let's have some fun. Let's talk something that we uh, we really enjoy and, and miss right now. And you know we've. You know, we did have spring training. We can't forget that we had about two and a half weeks of it, so that mattered. Um, and it's going to play a, a pivotal decision in, you know, teams' minds for some of these key position battles that were going on. Um, and, and and the first one that, that we'll get to is, is one that was on a lot of people's minds. You, you saw at least one of these guys get drafted in every league, the other one not so much. There's a heavy, heavy favorite, but I want to get your opinion on this. So Josh James and Framber Valdez, um, you know, both had very good springs. Uh, the stats up here are on the screen. You got eight and a, eight and two thirds innings for Josh James, uh, a little over three ERA, nine Ks, three walks. Valdez was uh, ten innings, uh, almost three and a half ERA, eleven Ks, four walks. I mean, both solid, but I mean, like, where do you see this going uh, as the season starts up here? Hopefully. <laughs> Well, personally, I think it's James. Like you said, he is he is the favorite. Uh, Valdez was good in small doses back in 2018. Uh, not so good last year. James you know, kind of built up a little bit last, you know, in 2019. He's got the dynamite strikeout stuff. He's the highly touted prospect. We'll see if Ver- how you know how long Justin Verlander is out. It might they might both have a spot right away. It depends on how long this this hiatus goes. Uh, but if I'm a fantasy player. Only one guy's name is on my mind, and that's Josh James. So Valdez is is just kind of another guy. Yeah, AJ, you got anything else to add to that? No, I kind of I kind of agree pretty much with exactly that. You know, Valdez is, hasn't been the the more known name, and you know the stats are nice. Again, it is spring training, so you, you got to take it for what it's worth. Um, it, it's nice to see, but 
is it going to maintain? Who knows? So I, I like James a lot this year, though, too. Yeah, the one thing you got to look at when you look at James's stats from last year within during the season is he's got to get that walk rate down. And, you know, he, he was at like a 5, 5. 5.1 uh, walk per nine. That's That's got to come down. Um, as a starter, I would imagine that would come down. Uh, he was in relief all last year, but uh, it's it's still got to come down for him to maintain value in a league or he's going to get destroyed with a full major league roster going against him every game. Yeah, definitely. So the next uh, yeah. next battle we have here, keeping it with the fifth starter role, is the Diamondbacks. Uh, you got Zach Gallen, you got Merrill Kelly, you got Alex Young. Um, I, I mean, these guys, uh, as you can see on the board, all pitched about the same uh, same crappy way. Uh, so I don't know if any of them really stands out ahead of another one. Uh, what are your thoughts on these guys, Ryan? Uh, well, to me, Merrill Kelly is just average. Uh, came over from Japan, wasn't bad uh again for fantasy purposes not a lot of strikeouts so that of course always takes him a step down uh alex young he's 26 he won seven games last year he was it wasn't horrific uh not great his strikeout rate i think is a little under nine per nine innings again kind of ho-hum zach gallon he's he's the guy to know in my opinion you know they traded for him last year from miami he was actually pretty decent right before he was traded from from the Marlins. Not quite as good when he came over to Arizona, uh, but he's the young and exciting guy. He's a little erratic. He's very uh, inconsistent still, uh, but I think the uh, the talent is there. The good strikeout stuff. Not a dominating strikeout pitcher, but a good strikeout pitcher. Uh, I think that he certainly has the upper hand of the three. I think the Diamondbacks want him to have the job. I think fantasy players want him to have the job. Uh, you see, he is the one of the three who is being drafted, I would say, in, in basically every every league. The other two guys I don't even really think you know come into consideration. But we'll see. I, you know, Just because people are drafting him doesn't mean he's going to be good. I think Gallon by far has the biggest upside. Uh, but he is, like I said, still inconsistent, still walking guys, uh, prone to the beginning. But if I had to take the chance on one of the three, I'm going to take a chance on the young, exciting guy with some strikeout potential. Yeah, 100% yeah. agree. I mean, Gallon was the guy last year. He he um, he was awesome. You know, kind of an unknown, not drafted guy. Um, with the Marlins was great. It was was again he was he was good with Arizona, but not as good like you said. Um, his his ADP though is still pretty high. It's it's 120. Yes. So he's He's going right now, NFBC number pitcher number forty-one, and I want to say that was actually higher. That's dropped. Um, uh, that was much higher at one point. I remember, like I, you know, TGFBI's early February, um, Raz Slam was was not far behind it, and he was going much much earlier than that. He's kind of dropped a little bit behind a few guys. I'm looking here on on the list that I, I was kind of surprised to see him behind, but I think he's an easy favorite. Again, no, nobody's doing awesome. I was actually super surprised to even hear that this was a battle for the fifth spot. I was like, what? Really? Gallon has to have this lockdown. Uh, I looked at Gallon's stats. I just did an article last week right before the shutdown about the rise of the followers in the spring. And this was one of the things I talked about. And uh, I was like, you know, Gallon's sort of fallen a little bit, but it doesn't matter. He's not going to lose this race because everybody else he's competing against is doing equally as bad, if not worse. So yeah. there you have it. <laughs> um so, yeah, uh, moving on here, we've got the Atlanta Braves' third base job. This is between two guys, Austin Riley and Johan Camargo. Um, I think it's – I don't think anybody thinks Camargo has quite the offensive game Riley does. Uh, in my opinion, Riley really needed a massive spring to beat out Camargo, though, just because – Camargo has the defensive skills far superior to Riley. But it didn't happen in the shortened spring, unfortunately. Riley didn't get the chance to really separate himself, um, in my opinion. Do you disagree or agree with that statement? Yeah, I, I agree. I, and this is going to be one, you know, we just talked the last two battles about the young guy with upside. 
And in this case, it is Austin Riley, but I don't think he's going to get the shot. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think his his avenue was maybe a corner outfield before they signed Marcelo Zuna. Uh, I, I, despite his upside, I think Camargo is going to get the job. Riley needs a little more time to develop. He needs to be able to hit something that's not a fastball. I mean, you just throw no. the guy a breaking ball, and he, and he just he just whiffs at it. Uh, it. The upside is legit, but. You know, the Braves are, are going for a division title. They're going for a pennant. They're, it's not all about upside with the Braves right now. They're, you know, they are competing. So if Riley was on the Marlins, I think he wins the job. Riley's on the Braves. I think Camargo gets the job. Like you said, he plays defense. He's not awful with, with the bat. He's, he's far from great, but he's not, you know, just an automatic out. And with that... I think he, he gets the job unless, you know, barring injury or he hits 195. I think we, we don't see Austin Riley with everyday at-bats. Yeah, I, I agree. Looking at, at the, the stats here, I mean, Riley Riley came out of the gates so hot last year, too, well, yeah. once he finally came up. And, you know, he ripped off seven homers, 20 RBIs in the month of May in, in, in 59 at-bats. Uh, hit, hitting 356, and then he fell off pretty hard um, in June. He still hit seven homers and had 17 RBIs, but only had a 226 average. Uh, and, and then he kind of just tailed off from there. I mean, August was his next best average month, but everything else, the the power disappeared. You know, the the at bats disappeared too. Uh, and and August he only had seven, so that's. Um, why his average probably shows so much better than the rest of those months. But, I mean, Camargo has been there. He's he's somebody that you've got to depend on defense-wise. You're not really looking for him to provide much with the bat because you have other pop in that lineup. So I think that's a the way that they're going to play it to start the season and and see what Riley can do as a, as a bench bat to start. So sticking with the Braves here, though, we'll, well go back me, to the pitching actually, side. Let, let me chime right, in on that. So else? I read something because uh, I wrote about this uh, in the article as well for Spring Training. I read something that, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the manager for the Braves said that whoever doesn't get the job is probably going to go back to the minors. So they won't be a bench yeah. bat. So if you draft the okay. Riley, you might be dropping him <laughs> come June. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, I mean, and frankly, <laughs> neither one of these guys is somebody I would be targeting in drafts, anyways. So, uh, I, I don't, I don't think I'm worried about if they're up or not, honestly. But that's good to know. Sorry for the uh, incorrect right. statement on that. All my good, end. all good. Uh, that's why we're a team. <laughs> what's that? That's why we're a team. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, all right, so sticking with the Braves, though, like I said, we'll we'll bounce back into this uh, fourth and fifth starter options for the rotation uh, i mean you're looking at sean newcomb you got kyle wright uh and then you got king felix so what are, what do you like out of these guys ryan you think you think there's anything left in the tank for felix or are they just gonna stick with the young guns honestly i, I don't think there's a lot left with felix uh i've i've been a newcomb fan since he came up from the from the miners, and I use the word fan kind of loosely. Uh, not like I'm exactly pounding the drum or picking him as my second starter, uh, but I've I've owned him al almost every year. Uh, of course, last year it went horribly wrong as he stunk and then got sent to the bullpen uh, in the minors. Uh, but you know he came back at the end of the year, pitched fairly well out of the bullpen, uh, and I, and I like his stuff. And he's got decent strikeout stuff. He's he's, he's you know he's a long way from you know one of the the top echelon pitchers in the league. Uh, but I do like Newcomb, and he's I, I've, I've picked him at the end of a couple of drafts uh, so far already this year. He, he's had some really solid performances in his career and, you know, some real stinkers as well. But uh, you know, I just don't think Felix has it anymore. I'm, I'm almost kind of surprised he found a, a second chance. Uh, yeah. Kyle Wright ha has some talent. He's got some decent strikeout stuff. Uh, was terrible in his starts last year, but he's still young. I think he uh, he's the least experienced of the three. So I think based on that alone, I think he's third in in uh, in the pecking order here. He was having a pretty decent spring before this this break that we're on. Uh, but right now, my guess and I and I don't know his 
you know, contract situation, but I'm guessing he has some options left. So I have a feeling that Newcomb is going to grab that fifth spot. Felix might end up in the bullpen or retiring, and I think Kyle Wright might find himself at AAA. Yeah, I think that's the best way for them to do it. Uh, I mean, Newcomb pitched pretty well last year. Wright still has has some time to grow, so there's no no use in trying to rush him, uh, in my opinion. But you know, we'll see what happens with it. Any yeah. thoughts, Joe? <laughs> I'm I'm with you, Ryan. Like I was shocked. Like I must have been sleeping or something for like a week at when Felix got signed because I had literally no idea that he got signed by the Braves. <laughs> I was doing the research for the article and I was like, "Wait a minute, Felix Hernandez is on the Braves? This is nonsense! Come on!" <laughs> and then I looked at the spring training stats and I was like, "Wow!" I mean, I get it; it's spring training, but I was pretty shocked to see what I saw. Um, but yeah, I, I'm right there with you. Like. If it really is the fourth and fifth, I think it's going to be Newcomb and, Her- and Felix. Um, and then as soon as Cole Hamels is healthy, which, I mean, hey, if we start a month and a half to two months later, then Cole Hamels might be healthy to start the year. Then I then I think, I don't know, like maybe Hernandez gets a couple starts just to see what happens. Um, see if they can keep Newcomb in the, in the bullpen. But I think it's ultimately for the majority of the season, it's going to be Newcomb in the rotation, right in the minors. Uh, right will get his chance here and there. Uh, I did take him in, in the in the Raz Ball, Raz Slam, best ball format, uh, just because I think he's talented and it was round like 40. So uh, why not? But yeah, I, I, I think Felix Hernandez eventually, you know, retires halfway through the season which i would have what i thought would have been july but maybe it'll be a month into the season who knows but yeah i I, i'm right on board with you on that though uh the last position battle we've got here is finally over in the al and we've got the boston red Sox. uh their second base slash infield slash whatever you want to call it i don't know i left it a second base because i think that's the, the the biggest hole in their infield um michael chavez and jose peraza uh, this one kind of reminds me of the Braves third base situation where you've got a, a young up and comer and then, you know, kind of a vet who's more of a defensive prowess, uh, but isn't a total zero at, with the bat. But, you know, what's your, what's your thoughts here with how, how this is going to play out and if you're even interested in any of these guys come come draft time? I can't say I'm really interested in either guy during draft time. Uh, if I... if I had to make my choice. I'd say Peraza. They brought him in. You know, he wasn't on the team last year, so there's some value there to the fact that they went out and got him. Chavez was on the team last year. I think he had 18 home runs. It might hit for a little better average than Peraza, uh, but, you know, Peraza's got that, that stolen base capability. He could steal 20 to 25 bags. Batting average can be a drag. He's been a drag most of his career. Uh, I don't know that either one of them is is exactly someone you're drafting in a 12 team league. Uh, maybe it maybe if you need a middle infielder, uh, but to me, I, I don't think the Red Sox brought Peraza in for no reason. Uh, I, I think if they thought they had the guy in house, that they wouldn't have done that. So that's the main reason I'm going for Peraza. He doesn't really throw me. I think he had like the 17 homer, 23 steal season for the Reds, but overall in his career, he's kind of been disappointing. Uh, neither one of them really thrills me. I think the Red Sox are going to, like you said earlier, not going to be very good this year. And that doesn't mean there's not gonna, nobody's going to put up any stats, uh, but if I had to lean one way or the other, it would be Peraza. Yeah, I think I kind of like uh, Chavez's upside a little better, honestly. Um, I mean, like you said, there there's some homer potential and and some stolen base potential with Peraza, but I mean he only stole seven bags last year, coming off a of back to back to back twenty plus with the Reds. So I know we talked about it all season long, or, or you know all preview show long about how nobody's running as it is anyway. So maybe that changes this year. Uh, we'll we'll see. I do think he's a he's a quality player to bring in and, and have. You know, to to give yourself that option though. But I, I kind of like Chavez, and and even from a drafting standpoint, with his eligibility at first and second, um, that that's helpful. But again, not necessarily somebody I'm I'm really targeting in drafts. But if he falls and I need something, 
uh, you know, I'll take a flyer on him. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to think about this. I'm, I'm on board with Ryan. Like, I don't really care about him. You know, in deeper leagues, I'm in the Dynasty League where we have 40 man rosters. I know Chavez was <laughs> he's been shopped around like five times. He's traded teams. I was doing mine at one point <laughs> this off season. Uh, I quickly shipped him away. Somebody was like, "I really want him," and I'm like, "Have fun." Uh, they gave me okay. Caleb Smith for there him, and I was like, "Uh, okay." <laughs> uh, it's a points league, so it was a no-brainer in my opinion. Um, Peraza just doesn't doesn't do anything for me. Chavez has the higher upside, as AJ you mentioned, but I don't think either one. Unless Chavez all of a sudden just clicks, and you know, for like a month and a half last year, he was awesome, and then he just plummeted off the face of the earth. Man, his batting average dropped. K's went straight up. Uh, he couldn't hit anything, and he's useless if he doesn't hit the ball. Uh, if he can hit the ball uh, with consistency, he's gonna hit, he's gonna hit 25, 30 home runs. But it's not it's not there yet. So um, I don't know where this is gonna go. Chavez at least has the eligibility where you know he can at least spell Moreland. So I don't think he's gonna get sent down to the minors. So like if you have him, he's probably gonna be like a utility guy. So you know maybe that's useful, especially in deeper leagues like. You know, Ryan, you said with, you know, middle in, middle infield, corner infield, whatever, like you can move him around when you need him. So he is useful for that reason, but he's going to be a utility guy, at least to start the season. So, all right, so let's move on here to some ADP risers and fallers. Um, so we're going to start with a big name pitcher for the last few years, Clayton Kershaw with the Dodgers here. So... February NFBC ADP was 50.2. His March ADP is now up 10 at 40. I mean, I know this has got to be because of all the pitching injuries we've got. Ryan, you mentioned Verlander. Obviously, we mentioned Sale earlier. You also mentioned Clevenger. Um you know, Max has been kind of iffy here and there. Um, not that he's dropped below Kershaw, but, you know, we've we've seen a lot of injuries come with pitching. And so I want to ask you, like, is the 40 ADP worth it? Like, is that where his value should be? Or are people just overreacting and just taking as much, you know, quality starting pitching as they can as fast as possible knowing knowing that these injuries have already happened I, I definitely think that pitching has you know a lot of the drafts that I've done uh, pitching has come at a premium uh, I remember one I, in fact I did with Tim McLeod where uh, like I, I even turned around and all of a sudden it was like 30 pitchers taken like I couldn't believe how fast pitching has, has gone this year it, it's such a turnaround from say five years ago where you could wait six rounds to take a pitcher and still kind of get a, a stud uh kershaw you know i've been out on him for a couple of years and i looked at him a little bit today getting ready for the show he's 32 years old so i mean he's not young however you know you figure a lot of injuries have followed him over the past couple of years he's made 25 or more starts and you you know, full season for a pitcher is 31, 32, 33 starts. So he's made 25 or more starts in every season but one. I, I thought he was injured a lot more than that for longer than that. However, at the same time, he's got about 2,300 innings on his arm. Mm -hmm. His strikeout rate has been going down a little bit. And his ERA has started to creep up a little bit. Uh, you know, he pitches for the Dodgers, obviously a very good offensive team. So he's got a little bit of a track record, you know, for wins. Uh the Giants aren't a very good offensive team, so the, the division isn't awesome. Maybe you can stay out of cores. I mean, the the Diamondbacks are improving. They're still they're still not great, uh, but I'm not buying at all. I, I'm done with Kershaw. As, as great as his career has been, I'd rather give up on a guy a little too soon than too late. Uh, you know, in the auctions that I do, I always put him up for nomination. Let other people spend the money mm -hmm. on him. I, I'm out on Kershaw. Uh, good move. I've, I've, was a little more impressed with his numbers when I looked at it to be ready for the show, but I, I'm I'm out. I can't do it. Yeah, I agree. I, I've just been so down on this guy for numerous years. Uh, really, probably five or more years, and it's not the earlier part of that is not because I just didn't like him. I just wasn't going to get him, I, and I knew I would not own him because he was performing, and and people would jump early to get him. 
Um, but the last few years, like you said, he's fallen off a little bit. And, uh, you know, it, he's almost kind of like Felix, honestly. I, I mean, he still has more in the tank than Felix. But Felix has so much mileage on his arm. And he's only 33. So he's right there, same age. And it's just it's crazy how how much work these guys have done. And, you know, injuries are always kind of there. So I'm not buying them at that price. Uh, so I'll let somebody else enjoy the ride yet again. Yeah, I mean, when you see, when you start seeing the, <clears throat> when you start seeing the walk rate climb up, uh, you know, the injuries mount. The, the thing that concerns me the most about him is, is the injuries. And it's the neck and the back, right? And it's one of the reasons why I'm kind of out on Max. Is Max is starting to get those. Um, and we've seen it with Kershaw. It's like, People are going to buy into the name. And Max was awesome still last year, but, dude, he missed a good chunk of the season. When he came back, he was not even close to the same. Um, but when you see the walk start going up and and things like that, like it, it's one thing that it's just like, you know, the, 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 the swinging strike percentage is starting to drop slightly too. Like that's just not a good a good rate of – for where he's going. I think there's guys going around him that I'd much rather have at this point. So, Yeah, I agree with that, too. So uh, another guy that we have uh, moving moving on up like the Jeffersons here is Jesus Luzardo. Dude's up 12 spots right now um, compared to where he was in February. He was sitting at an ADP of uh, just over 120 in February. Now he's at 108. Um, I mean, this guy was was super touted last year. You know, he was he was kind of the guy that everybody was stashing, and then injuries derailed the season. Um, what are your thoughts on Lazardo? Is is he someone that you're you're looking at 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 that current ADP? If not, you know, earlier. I honestly really like Luzardo. Like you said, he, I am one of the people who stashed him. I remember in the TGFBI, I stashed him all season long. And, you know, I was so far out of it. By the time he actually pitched, it didn't matter. Uh, I know they, they came in and they said Luzardo and A.J. Puck are not going to be on an innings limit this year. He threw 55 innings between the minors and the majors last year. How is he not on an innings limit? I just yeah. I refuse to believe that he's not on an innings limit. If he pitches more than 120 innings, I'll be shocked. Now, that being said, with this break, or if we don't start till June, is 120 innings not that big of a deal? He is one of the guys who is yeah. going to be a complete wild card with this pause in play. Uh, if, if he's going to throw 100 or 120 innings, that might be most of the season. So uh, he is he is fantastic. He's got world of talent, strikeout rates. Uh, very good. He had bad shoulder injury last year, so that there, you know, there is some concern. Personally, to me, I like his teammate Frankie Montas a little bit better. Had the PED suspension last year, but he was nine <laughs> and two, the two point six three ERA and one hundred and three strikeouts in ninety six innings. A little less uh, risk to me with Montas than with Lazardo. So if I'm targeting one or the other, I'm going with Lazardo's teammate. But I don't think with this probably probably short season. You can go wrong with either one, dude. I hear you, man. I heard the I heard the no innings limit, and I was like, "How is that possible? It doesn't even make any sense." That's like, it's like the worst management ever. I mean, are they like the freaking New York Giants management stepping in play here? Like uh, Browns, like the Redskins, like this is awful. Um, uh, it didn't make any damn sense to me that they weren't gonna have an innings limit back in February, you know, for a full season. But um, no, the the talent is on a you know unarguable at this point like it, it's it's there and yeah shortened season could only be, be the best thing for him he could get a full season in in a short season you know that's that's basically what's going to happen um i do want to ask you though because we asked this question about Montos last week in the pitching planner in the pitching preview um so you're 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 in on him you don't think the peds was like a big factor in his success last year I, it's something I, I just don't really know. Like I, you know, I don't I think anybody. Really you know, knows. I don't know, but I'm going to go with what he did when he came back from the suspension, which was fantastic. 
Yeah. So I, I don't think he learned his lesson per se. <laughs> we're using air quotes here. Uh, maybe not. You know, I don't know what they. I believe he's Dominican, so you know they you know, they skirt everything down there. So I, you know they obviously don't have the same rules that we have here. Uh, I, I don't know. I, you know, clearly there's a lot of unknown there, but I'm going to go with what I saw when he came back from suspension, and it was fantastic pitching. The A's have a cavernous home ballpark uh, that is uh, just pitching heaven. Uh, they're, they have a pretty good offensive team. Uh, so, yeah, I, it, I'm yeah, I'm all in on Montas. I don't believe that I was lucky enough to get him in leagues that I've drafted so far. But if I'm taking one or the other, that, that's who I'm going with. I'm going to PED suspension be damned. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I I, uh, I like Lizardo. I do like Montas's upside. Um, I am not as quick to jump on for him yet, but that could change in two months when we finally get ba- baseball. Uh, but... okay. Here's here's a theory I have real quick before we move on, and this this kind of goes with the NBA. So we know all these NBA guys are getting tested, the Nets and the Thunder, and, and everybody mm-hmm. else is getting tested, and guys are coming back positive. I saw like uh, uh, what's his name, the coach of the Saints, uh, oh, has uh, the Peyton. coronavirus. Peyton. Yep. So like all these all these athletes are getting tested. So conspiracy theory here. My thought is all these people are being tested over people, you know, everyday people who are probably more more uh, susceptible and not only is you know in this country obviously the rich are, are you know favored staying but rich are they, are they testing <laughs> all of these athletes in an attempt to get us at least to fanless games faster yeah you know? absolutely that's what i'm hoping and that's what i'm thinking like let's Could test be. all the nba if we can get everybody clean let's get them on the court I uh, I don't disagree with you. Uh, I, I hope it happens. It, it's it's a should. shame that we're wasting tests. It feels like we're wasting tests, right? On on some of these guys. Not to not to get too far off topic, but you know, it's important to test these guys too. But yeah, there's probably people that need these tests more than they do, <laughs> and they're so super hoping, healthy. But if you're wasting them. It's at least to get us sports back faster. Which yeah. Is hey, selfish, but... I'll take it. I'm. It's... Yeah. They are yeah. losing millions of dollars a day. Let's not let's not be naive. After okay. after a uh, yeah, after a, a nine hour day with my kids, I could use a basketball or a baseball game right now. Pretty Thank bad. You, hoping, <laughs> pretty pretty yeah. bad, man. It's like all right, well, go go gadget, go bear, Mike Arms. All right, you know we gotta <laughs> oh. we gotta make sure that that I need to go get tested now. Um, yeah. But all right, yeah, all right, all right, back to baseball. Nah, I'll anyway. go, man. All good, all good, all good. A little good so, to have sidetrack talk sometimes, but Luzardo. I, I mean, I'm I'm not as concerned with the the innings limit comment because he did pitch just about 110 innings in 2018. You know, obviously last year he had the injury, so that held him out and and dropped his count a lot. But he probably, if he was healthy, would have been on pace for at least, you know, 130, 140 last year. So, you know, with the way that they bump up, um, you know, I still feel like there should be some sort of limitation. But it, now that the season's short, I, I agree, Ryan, that 120 is well within reach. And there's no reason to to shut that down. So that's uh, that's what I, where I'll finish it with that. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, so David Price is our next guy, another Dodger. Um, I obviously can't spell Angeles uh, here. Um, I'll fix that. Uh, anyway, February NFBC was one. I want to say this was one. Man, I typed this in super fast. I was half asleep when I did this. Clearly. Um, anyway. I want to say it was like 163 or something like that. I'm just going to go with that. 163, and then he's down to 153 now in March. Um, I mean, does the move to L.A. really bump his value up that more, much more for you? I'm really torn. Uh, there's part of me that, that likes Price, especially he's out of the AL. He's out of the AL East, most importantly. Uh, doesn't have to face the Yankees two or three times a year, who absolutely torture the guy. Uh, he gets some, you know, he trades the Yankees for the Giants, which is a, is a great trade for for any pitcher. Right. Uh, you know, he's not that far away from some dominating seasons. However, 
you know, durability is a concern. Like you said, he's not a spring chicken at all. He's got a lot of innings on the arm. Uh, certainly not the guy that he was, you know, back in his prime in, in Tampa Bay. I think he's a bounce back candidate. I, I, I don't think as a, you know, your third pitcher or your fourth pitcher, he's he's that bad of a choice. If he's your second, I think your your fantasy rotation is in <laughs> for some trouble. Yes. Uh, I, I think he has a chance to, to have a nice bounce back season, but I'm not, he's not a guy I'm beating the drum for or, or you know, paying that extra dollar in an auction or jumping up around to get him. Uh, but if he falls to me in the right spot, I'm okay uh, picking up David Price. Yeah, he was he was definitely disappointing last year after his 2018 season with the Sox. You know, 16 and seven, you know, uh, 176 innings. Uh, you know, the 3.58 ERA for is is pretty damn good for the AL East. So I think just seeing what happened to him last year. Now, granted, his FIP. Last year was down at 362, and his ERA was up at 428. So, you know, it seems like he was getting a little unlucky there as well. Um, but I just, I don't know. I, I think with him going to the Dodgers, you know, Joe's coined the term uh, Dodgering pitchers, uh, and I've stolen the term because, you know, we're a team, so we do that. But <laughs> I, I think he could easily get Dodgered. Um, even with the shortened season, and it could help him because, you know, he's 34 years old. Um, he's got almost 2,100 innings uh, on his arm there, so he's thrown a lot of ball, and and I think he, he needs to be dodgered uh, or have some shortened outings, you know, here and there, especially if, if the Dodgers' offense – just puts up numbers you know you don't need him to carry deep into a game let the bullpen take it over and, and go from there yeah D- dodger is uh if is is this randomly being put on the il for uh for oh he's got a, he's got a bad shoulder but miraculously in two weeks he's gonna come back he's gonna miss yeah. two starts just to save his season so. Oh, well, Ross Stripling's got Tommy John, but he'll be back in three weeks. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, no fine. it's fine. <laughs> Have it all the time. So, yeah. not, not that extreme, but close to it. <laughs> uh, so the next next guy we got here is a little, a little more in my wheelhouse with the relievers since I'm uh, the, the closer chart guy for Fantasy Six Pack. Um, Will Smith has now dropped – from being the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, 14 spots on the ADP. <laughs> so, I mean, he, he's still being drafted around 166 overall. You know, so it's not not great, but it, it's interesting since he's not necessarily pegged to be the closer to start the season. So, Ryan, do you think that's still too high for, for Smith? I, I think it's just a matter of time before he takes the job. Mark Melanson is really not that great. Uh, hasn't really ever been in his career. I, I think the Braves brought in Will Smith to be the closer without giving him the job right away or, or maybe at least a nice uh, parachute in case that happens. So to me, I, I'm loving the, the little drop because he's somebody I'm all over. Like if, if he's not the closer right away, I'd say within a month or so, uh, I think he will be. The Braves, like I mentioned earlier, are in the race. They're in it to win it. They're not going to con- continue with Melanson if he's blowing saves left and right. Uh, so I think he's got a pretty short leash. And they brought in Smith, and they paid him a pretty decent amount. I don't yeah. remember the contract off the top of my head, but it wasn't cheap. Uh, so they didn't bring him in for nothing. So Will Smith, uh, by all the bargain, I'm, I'm, I'm in on this guy. Yeah, I mean, he's one of those guys that, are like, I, I don't think I'm ever going to have him on one of my teams because I think people are just – grabbing him way before I'm going to take a, a closer who or a, a reliever who doesn't give me saves, at least for the first maybe month, maybe month and a half. I don't know. Like, who knows how short of a leash Melanson really has. I mean, he's not great, but, I mean, let's not forget, like, he did a decent job last year. He saved a good number of games for the Braves. Uh, he, he worked, right? And so you got to wonder if they're going to put Will Smith the, the in that kind of – you know, fireman role, right? Where, hey, it's the bottom of the seventh, we're in a tight spot, Will Smith go out there and get us five, six outs. 
And then Melanson just got there and gets three. That's the thing that scares me in this, is that they they brought him in for all this money, but they could just use him as the better guy. You know, like Andrew Miller got tossed around for so many years, right? And yeah. that's what I think about with Will Smith. It's not that I don't think he's more talented than Melanson, but I don't know if you're not in a holds league, he might not give you that value back. So that's yeah. the only hesitation in my mind with him. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely interesting because Atlanta pretty much cleaned house on their bullpen at the trade deadline last year and brought in Smith, they brought in Melanson, and they brought in Shane Green. All, you know, closer-capable guys. Um, And, you know, Melanson ended up with the job. It was kind of back and forth, back and forth for a while, you know, right when they all got there. But Melanson ultimately took it over, you know, in, in mid-August, really. And he he was just a saves machine. I mean, he racked up 12 saves um, for the Braves. And basically all of them, except for one, for were from August 13th to September 19th, I think it is. Yeah. So in a month, uh, you know, that, that's a lot, of, a lot of action. And he just really held the role. But here again, it's the magic, uh, magic age of 34 strikes again, and you know he's a career uh, guy that's not really that sexy of a of a saves guy. So I, I think he's he's gonna start the year, and it's only a matter of time. I, I agree with that. So. All right, so the last pitcher we have to talk about is a guy who I just needed to bring up because I I mentioned him as my my underrated pitcher last week. I, I've mentioned him in a bunch of different spots, you know, fancy pros and things like that. Dylan Bundy. He got moved to L.A., the Angels, not the Dodgers. Uh, so he's out of Camden Yards. I get it. This guy's been a complete train wreck. You know, like, he's got the strikeout potential. He's got the ace potential. He came in as a big prospect, but he's never really shown it. He's had flashes, I get it, um, but it's never really come through. I love this move for him. Get him out of Camden Yards where he just gets obliterated by the home run ball. Um, He's got a phenomenal offense around him now. He doesn't have to play in the ALE's ballparks where he's also getting obliterated by the home run ball. And look, the spring stats don't lie, man. Like, I, d- I don't have my article up. I wrote about him in that, where, like, the risers, fallers. His spring training stats were amazing. And baseball reference, give them credit, because I was always wondering this. Like, what's the level of talent that they play? They rate the level of talent that the players play against in spring training on a rating of 1 to 10. His was, like, 8.2. It's, like, one of the highest out of all the pitchers out there. Uh, so it's not like he was facing nobody's and his spring training stats were great. So I just, his ADP has gone up, uh, up in a good way to 225, like a 27 point jump. I mean, is this still too low for this guy? Or are you just like, nah, I don't want nothing to do with him. It's still Dylan Bundy. Uh, I don't know, Joe. I, 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 it's still Dylan Bundy to me, I think. Uh, you know, going from the NL to the AL is not good. I'm sorry. Well, the AL, AL East. No. Sorry, he didn't change leagues. No. He just changed. I mean, out of the AL East is fine. Uh, he gets some Seattle games in there. He, Like you said, he always has a strikeout potential. His ERA's never been under four. If it's late enough, I'll take the shot, but he's not someone I'm, I'm targeting at all. I mean, I figure you can still get him, in even in a 12-team league, you can get him in the last three rounds easily. And there's no risk. You don't have to go crazy with reaching for him. But I think, I think he's going to pay dividends, man. I think he's going to be, you know, at least like an SP5 on your team, um, which is – Phenomenal for the ADP he's going at right now. Yeah, I mean, I I like Bundy uh, this year. Uh, I wrote about him in my uh, 
this year's Lucas Giolito article um, on, that we had posted on the site about two weeks ago, a little, little over that, actually. I mean, the, the very interesting stat that I found while I was was writing about him, I'm, try, I'm trying to sift through the article now to see if I can find it again, was that he only gave up six homers in 167 innings pitched in the minors. And then he just got completely shellacked in the majors. Um, so I, I think the move to a very, very pitcher-friendly park compared to a very, very pitcher-unfriendly park will help him out. Um I think he's got some work to do, uh, but it's a, it's a much better landing spot for him, and and I think he he can be successful. And, and where he's going, I mean, that's that's a pretty pretty solid price in my mind. Yeah, I think that's kind of what I wanted to point out is that he's still basically free, so that's why I wanted to bring him up again. Yeah, yeah it wasn't that I'm like. Trying to say, hey, go get him in the twelfth round. It's he's free still. Just go get him in the last round. And what do you have to what do you have to risk there? So, all right, moving on here to some hitters. Let, let's move on here. Um, all right, Aaron, we got go ahead. We got some New York guys that we want to focus on. So, Stanton, Judge, they're down twenty five and forty two respectively. You know, clearly this is reaction to the injury news that that we've seen here in early March. Um, but how much does this change if you're drafting after today, with the season not starting until mid-May at the earliest? Hard pass for me on both uh, Stanton. I, I just can't trust him to stay healthy anymore. He played like what 19, 18 games, something last year. You know, earlier in, the, in his career, it was, oh, he got hit in the face. He, this happened. It was freak injuries. But it's not freak injuries anymore. It's, you know, it's bone muscle, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I I can't trust the guy. I, I just I, – I'm in his ADP, while it's fallen, it's not still fallen to a place where it's cheap or you're not still getting stars. So I'm out on Stanton and on Judge, the rib injury, the, you know, the, the twisting, turning – thing where you're hitting is just easy to re-aggravate. He has been injury prone over the past couple of years, so honestly, right now, I- I'm I'm out on both. Yeah, I, I totally agree. We talked about this uh, a couple times on the show, and this was before the the delay, but I'm still with you on, even with the delay. Like, I know their ADP is going to rise. Somebody's going to take the risk. I will not. Uh, I've been wrong before on Stanton. You know, he's had, he's had healthy seasons, but I didn't think he was going to. But, uh, you know, soft tissue injuries, just that is a re-injury waiting to happen. And Judge has been injury prone too, just like you said. So I, I want nothing to do with either one of them. So Yeah, I, I'm passing as well. <laughs> always was, always will. Um, so that's all I need to say. All right, so a guy that I found interesting when I was looking at ADP and I was kind of surprised to see how low he was really going was Paul DeJong. This guy hit 30 home runs as a shortstop last year. I know his average is abysmal. 233, right? Uh, It's not good. 241 the year before. But, like, why is he going around 200 at the end of February? Granted, it's climbed to 192, but... I don't know. I think it's still too late. Ryan, do you agree with that? He is my middle infielder in every friggin' league I've right? got, Joe. Like, <laughs> Thank it's, you. It's ridiculous how far this guy has fallen. I'm a Cardinals fan, but I don't even think that comes into consideration. How many middle infielders are hitting so many home runs as this guy? I don't give a damn what his average is. Like You're getting him so incredibly late. He's your middle infielder, or shortstop is so damn deep, you can just wait the whole draft and pick him at the end. Thank I think you. he's Thank just going to continue Thank to rise. You. I love Paul DeJong. Give me all I can get. I was so pissed because, honestly, in our in our fancy six-pack baseball league, it's a four-man keeper league, and uh, the day before the keeper, the, the guy who has DeJong wasn't keeping him at first. And was like, man, I don't know what to do. Like, Mancini's got this issue and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't know. And, like, 
the last second, he switched him to DeJong. And I was like, damn it! <laughs> I was going to go get him in a heartbeat. Yeah, he got Dijon for like around 17 he's keeper. He's going to hit clean up for this team. I think he's going to hit at least 25 again. This Amazing. Year. Like, yeah. it's so I, crazy. I don't know what you should do, but, you know, you probably shouldn't keep Dijon. I mean, that guy sucks. Yeah, he, I was I was like, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> Try uh, the reverse psychology. No, you know what it was? Like, we don't have to keep four. I was like, you know, you don't have to keep four. You could just not keep anybody. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you, tr- you you want the jong late? I was like, no, nah, not really. I, I've got my guys. I just, you know, whatever. Yeah, he called him. He called my bluff and kept the jong pretty hard. <laughs> I was like, damn it. <laughs> so, no, I'm with you guys, man. Like, it's the jong is super value here. Like, I don't even know why he's going as late as he is. Ugh, crazy. I, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. I mean, he had, you know. Basically, 170 more at bats, uh, or I'm sorry, plate appearances last year compared to 18, um, and he played the full season. I mean, he was a monster. There's 78 RBIs, 97 runs, and, he, and nine stolen. I will bags. say I mean, this: he's he's gonna get he's gonna get double digit steals this year. 30 homers. I mean, he could he could easily crack 35. Um, I mean, it's just, it's absurd why he's staying as long as he is. I, I, I will say this. He had a, a a March, April that was incredible. Um, he hit, I, 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 it's funny, I didn't actually mean to pick all the same guys that I wrote about, but, like, I did. Um, his April, May, right, he hit five home runs, scored 26 runs while hitting 342. Uh, the rest of the way, he still hit for a lot of power, but his batting average is plummeted to 207. I think that's scaring a lot of people off. Um, his spring, though, he's hitting 500. Like, that's a good sign. Now, he's not going to hit 500 in the season. We all know that. But, like, look, I don't think there's any reason to think he can't get back to, you know, 250 at least. I mean, I think in 2018 he was injured, and, you know, he was trying to hit through an injury, and he was batting 241. Even if he climbs back to 241, 245, getting him at 192 is a super value because he's going to hit 20, 25. I would say at least 25. He's going to hit 25 to 30 again. So it's just a super value here for him, in my opinion. But, yeah, I mean, you're not you're not going into the draft at the 200s thinking, oh, shit, I need average. Uh, what am I going to do here? No. I mean, you're fine. You're trying to. You're you're picking and choosing you're picking your categories. Your you may need average, so <laughs> then you might let it wait a little bit longer. But he offers so much more in power that you're like, oh, fuck the average. I'm going to go with this. stats, yeah. you know, runs and RBI. I mean, it's going to be great. So, all right, let's move yeah. on. So, all right, next guy we got here, Mister, uh, you know, the Franimal himself. Fran Mel Reyes, dude's up 17 and a half spots. So it, it's interesting that Keith Lott from Fantasy Six Pack put out a poll earlier this month asking if you would rather have Kyle Schwarber or the Franimal. And it looks like pretty much everybody that sorry, I can't talk. Birdie. Everybody Urbot, right. <laughs> Urbot. Looks like everybody prefers Reyes <laughs> as I mean he, he totally distanced himself in the ADP department. Why? Why is he the pick, Ryan? I'm honestly not a huge Kyle Schwarber fan. It could be that I'm a Cardinals fan. He's a Cub, but uh, I, I like to check the My yeah. fan doesn't come into play. In the <coughs> Bullshit. <laughs> I mean, Reyes was having a fantastic spring before this break. He was hitting 337, five homers, 11 RBIs in just 10 games. Easily has 30 homer power again. Not going to hit for a great average, but neither is Schwarber. Uh, to me, and, and you know, Reyes is in the AL and it is going to DH probably a decent amount of time, uh, but uh, Schorber also belongs in the AL and belongs DHing. Uh, and now that defense comes into play for fantasy baseball, they're very similar players. I, I think Reyes, and you can correct me if his ADP is not a little bit lower th- than Schorber, um, so maybe my fandom is biasing me a little bit, but I'm going to take – if my choice is one or the other, I feel like they're pretty similar players, and I'd go with Reyes. Yeah, so I looked at the ADP as of today. 
and uh, in, in NFBC and, and Schwarber again was was still around like the 136 range. Um, so Reyes, like like AJ said, distanced himself a little bit He's up at 121. Um, the reason why I just don't like Schwarber, and you know, it's gonna be different with Madden gone, but um, I, I just feel like in the AL, especially since Schwarber is a defensive liability, he's gonna get pulled. And so you lose with the bats, man. And like that's one reason why I just don't want him. Uh, and 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 it's a reason when like a reason why when when there's a, a toss up between a bat at a spot in a draft for me, if it's an AL versus an NL guy, it's almost always the AL guy because he's less likely to get pulled for those crazy shifts that happen, right? Like it's just. You know, hey, we need we need we need to get this reliever in real quick. So we're gonna swap you around and get the defensive player out here. Or oh, hey, we went up by three runs in the last inning and you suck at the outfield. So we're gonna pull you. Like it just it's nuts, man. Like I, I just don't like it. So um, yeah, I mean I'm a big Franimal fan too. So that's probably part of the reason. <laughs> yeah, I, I like both of these guys honestly. I mean where they're going, uh, the the jump for Fran Mill is. Uh, not surprising. Um, I, I definitely liked him better where he was, uh, and it was kind of a toss-up for me there. It, it just depended on, you know, who fell to me. I feel like it, if if I was drafting both of them, and that's kind of how Keith phrased it, that, you know, if they both fall to you, what are you doing? So, you know, it, it was 50-50, but obviously Fran Mill's getting more love now, so I, you know, I might sit and wait and, and go after the the Schwarber get the same power and uh you know try to fill a different need a little bit earlier where where Franny's going now all good all good all right last guy here is uh we started started with Astros we're gonna end with Astros I swear we're not (laughs) cheating um but Kyle Tucker his February ADP was 156 it has now dropped to 175. I mean, I think early on a lot of people thought his he was the favorite for the outfield job, but I'm not sure he he's really locked that down. And that's I think my reason why he's not he's he's dropping. But I mean, is Reddick really enough of a scare for for this kind of a drop? 20 20 spots. That's a lot. <laughs> I, you know, I think part of it was his spring. He wasn't really doing very well before the break. Uh, you know, and Reddick is the, the veteran. Is he going to keep the spot? I also think that Astros are being undervalued. We heard AJ cough <coughs> cheaters under his breath. I think I think across the board, the Astros are being dropped a little bit. So I think a lot of that is coming into play uh, yeah. with Tucker. I think at the end, the cream will rise and he will get the, the, the starts. Uh, so within a certain amount of time after the season starts, I believe he will be the guy. Uh, so he's kind of a bargain I'm buying on. Yeah, especially in deeper leagues. Like if you if you can you know draft and stash and you got those benches, why not? Uh, I, I I totally agree there. I think go for it with him. In the United World's 12 team leagues where he's only got like four or five bench spots, I don't know if you can you know wait the month that it's going to take him to fully overtake Reddick. But AJ, yeah. what do you think? I definitely like Tucker. Um, I, I mean, he he just to me he just hasn't gotten his opportunity yet. And mm-hmm. I mean, the dude's only twenty three years old. Um, Reddick is a solid player, but this guy's got stolen base upside. I mean, he stole thirty bags in AAA last year, twenty bags in AAA the year before. Um, so that never really translated into the games he played. You know, which were way fewer, but I think they need to get him in there more and let him do his thing. I mean, he's got the talent, he's got the upside, um, so I, I definitely like like what he brings to the table and think that he can he can surprise some people. Yeah, absolutely. He's got power too. I mean, he does. Be- between those two two Triple uh, A seasons, he had fifty eight home runs. So, you know. That's that says something. So he's only got four in the majors. 
So I, I think yeah, I mean need project, just, projections need give him a fair, uh, a fair number of home runs. So I totally agree with you, AJ. So yeah, I mean, uh, so that's it for the for the show, Ryan. Um, before we head out, let's let's have you remind everybody where they can find you and, and what you got on on tap for uh, the next few months. <laughs> Uh, go to fantasyalarm.com. Uh, right now, like you said, I'm doing a lot of different sports. I have the NFL free agent tracker going on there. I've nice. been doing some instant reaction videos to some of the signings. Uh, but also for MLB, I just did an article for uh, my Tout Wars auction uh, recap. It was not only just the guys I picked and why, but kind of my mindset as I went through it. Uh, it was supposed to be a live auction, but of course, thanks to this stupid virus, uh, it was on. Yeah. Uh, but I still, it was still a great, great time. Uh, I've been doing some first base previews. I did one like the, you know, after round ten preview. I did another one for OBP leagues for guys whose OBP is a hundred points higher than their batting average. So you can find on that on there. So fantasy alarm, I'm all, I'm all over there right now. So uh, go over there and check out what I'm doing and all the other great people on there as well. Nice man, yeah, I, I do enjoy that site. What uh, and and you guys are you guys are fun to talk to on Twitter for sure. So we we appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Um, yeah, thanks for coming on. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. All right, have a good night. All right, talk to you. Cheers. All right, AJ. Uh, so that's it for me. Uh, and that's that's kind of it for our, our scheduled baseball talk. I mean, we were expecting to jump into the season next week, so we're gonna have to get creative with some pods. Uh. We're probably going to have some off weeks just because there's going to be nothing to talk about. But like I said, you know, we can talk. You and I, I think, maybe knock out some free agency stuff next week. Get somebody from the site jump on. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, we're not going to go away totally. We've got some stuff coming for the site still. Um, you know, we're coming up with new content every day. Um, and it's just a matter of people getting through their, their crazy, hectic schedules to, to get it written. So, um Yep. Yeah, that's, I, I've that's been working right on my now. this year's Liam Hendricks article for about two weeks. <laughs> it's about three, about three weeks. Yeah, yeah I wasn't. What, gonna, what I, I two, wasn't going to call you out. I wasn't going to call you out on that. But no, two, two weeks, maybe, maybe. I said two. Ten days. We'll I call said it. two. I said two. Um, but yeah, it, it's been two. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it's just it'll, it'll come out. Um, but people are doing I've stuff. Got all the guys listed that I want to talk about. I saw. I saw. Um, so at least there's that. Uh, and, and the article was potentially this year's Liam Hendricks slash Will Smith, but I'm, I'm leaving it at Hendricks. Um, maybe I'll have a teaser in there about Will Smith now that we've talked about him again. Maybe not. I'll probably forget after another beer or two, but uh, eh, who knows? The article will be you're out cut, some point. cut off. Keep an eye out. <laughs> uh, we'll tweet it out once it's, <laughs> once it's out there. Yep, but, yep. Um, and like I said, go vote on the, the 2000s best. Yeah. NCAA uh, Get men's basketball there. player. Vote on the players. Vote, vote, it's, vote. Uh, and vote on the entire thing, guys. Don't scroll. Don't go past the first bracket and stop. There's four yeah, brackets. Yeah, the whole it's thing. the same thing. There's 64 I, teams. Go vote on all 64 rounds or I, I 32 matches. I did it on my, uh, on my phone. And it's there was fun, a couple guys. that I was like, eh, I kind of want to change it. You can't There's change some it. Tough so once your ones. vote is in, it's locked. There really are uh, some tough ones. I love the uh, – who was it? Somebody versus John Wall. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. It was uh, – There's two that, Kentucky was another, guys. Uh, it was another Wildcat. Uh, was Davis. It, Davis. Was it Davis? And, yeah, and then Kemba yeah, went, went against Derrick Rose. I was like, man, these were phenomenal. By the way, this was kind of – it wasn't completely random. We did it with something called Wins – Win score or something like that. I, I I don't know what site Keith found to find this win score, um, wins rating or whatever it is. But it it let us rank the guys arbitrarily so that it wasn't biased by us. Um, it was computational by some other site, some other source, and it was just some of the some of the rankings were hilarious. Like I was honestly floored by the fact that Carmelo Anthony was a sixteen. I was like. What? Dude, I, amazing. Off, but I forgot like because I didn't know what I didn't know what to do with that. And I, that was one of the ones I wanted to go back and change. And nope, I, I stuck. couldn't. And yeah. I was like, wait, wait, what ah, damn it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean the vote was Get in, on a different computer. Was, that was it. <laughs> Open up an incognito window and vote again. <laughs> it, 
Well, yeah, I did it on my phone, so I'll do it on the computer. Yeah, do it again. So Carmelo, it, it's of... fun though, guys. Just have fun with it. Like we're all missing sports. Give us something to talk about. Debate with us. Yell at us on Twitter. I don't care. We'll take it. Like whatever. So have fun with it, guys. Get through this. We're all here together. Talk to us on Twitter. Follow us on YouTube. Follow us on Anchor. Um, you name it. We'll talk back. We're all dying for sports talk. Just. We'll get yeah. through this together, guys. We, we need it. <laughs> we need you it know, badly. We, we need to come together in this distancing of socialing um, to Distance, actually social let sports bring maybe? us back, <laughs> bring us back together. Right. I know. My my fandom tonight is split between the the Orioles and Phillies. Obviously, it's been split that way, um, as you have seen by the pictures behind me. Um, and uh, I finally wrote on the chalkboard. I'm sure it is not legible because, at least the way the camera reads it, it's backwards. So I will fix that for <laughs> the next pod and write you it backwards. Write. On no, the chalkboard you can read it. So you can beer read it. of the week, Union Craft Brewing, Steady Eddie's Seasonal IPA. I, I mean, you can. You can it's back. It no, it's backwards. The right way on. It is. So I think it's backwards okay. on OBS. So it's backwards it's... when I'm looking at my hangout. So if it's on, no, nope, if it's straight I think on it's, the thing, then great. It's, it's right for me. So which means it's right on OBS, which means it's right when it's going to get recorded. So you're good. You're all good. So I like for, it. For I'm... you, it's it's behind my left shoulder your or your right shoulder. My right. Your right shoulder. Okay. Well, that's how I'm seeing it then. All right. So you're good. We're all good, man. All right. Well, let's close it out. Stop rambling. Everybody. Try to enjoy yourselves as much as possible. Talk to you later. Be safe.